Hello, good evening, Eileen. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. How are you today? I'm fine. Um, I'm here. Uh, I'm Maria Listo. <laughs> ready. Ready. Ready to class. Okay, very good. Okay, we're going to wait a few minutes meanwhile the other people come into the class. A veces, aunque sepamos las palabras y las conozcamos, se esconden y cuesta decirlas. <risas> sí, mire, es normal, es normal porque quizás uno de los problemas que tenemos es que practicamos solo aquí en la clase, ¿verdad? Entonces, sabemos que alguna vez la usamos, la vimos, la entendemos, pero, pero a la hora de hablar, como no lo usamos mucho, ¿verdad? Es donde, donde se nos pierden, pero con la práctica se va agarrando eso. Sí, así es. Pero es bueno que, que intentemos ahí de hablar en inglés. Hello, Emily. Hello, teacher. How are you today? I'm fine. You? Well, I'm very well. Thank you for asking. Welcome to the class. And uh, we are waiting just a few minutes. Vamos a esperar solo unos minutos, un par de minutos, para que los demás puedan meterse a la clase. Okay. Hello, good evening. Good evening. How are you today? Fine. Perfect, welcome to the class. We are waiting for other classmates to join and then we're going to start.
Ok, my friends, we are going to start. Vamos a iniciar la clase. Quizá la primera pregunta que siempre hacemos en la clase es, ahora quizá sería, ¿finalizaron ya la plataforma? Todo finalizado sí. ya. Todo el examen final y todo, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Good. Anyways, yes. perfect, good. Anyways, lo que vamos a hacer es ir revisando rapidito la plataforma y luego vamos a iniciar la clase, ¿ok? So, just to check some different things there. Ok, so, um, Emily, could you please help me reading this objective? In this lesson, participants will be able to listen to a conversation about families using present continuous. Very good. So this is about present continuous. That is something that we're going to start checking today. And there is a little conversation uh, that here the teacher is explaining, asking about families and things like that. And then the 5.2 is the knowledge check. So in this one, it says that we're going to look at Sam's family tree. How are these people related to him? Write the answers of the spaces provided. You just need to type the name or not a sentence. So only the names. Uh, I believe that here the only problem was number four, that it was two, two people. But uh, the rest, I guess it was good. Alguna pregunta, duda con este ejercicio? The family tree. No questions, good. So the next one is uh, a 5.3. Um, Aileen, could you please help me reading this objective? At the end of this lesson, participants will be able to ask and answer questions using the present continuous. Perfect, thank you. So this is about a conversation uh, with the present continuous, right? It is a little conversation. And then we have the 5.5 lesson objective. Uh, Umberto, could you please help me reading this one? In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation between two people talking about their family size using qua quantifier. Very good. So this is about quantifiers, about family. So this is not that complicated. Um, and then we have the little um, conversation here. Uh, let's practice this little thing. Let's see. Uh, Fabiola, uh, you are going to be the second one and I'm going to be the first one, okay? So I start. Um, how many brothers or sisters do you have, Maylee? Ah, creo que viene llegando. Okay, Erling, could you please help me? You are going to be Maylee. Okay. Okay, I'll start. How many brothers and sisters do you have, Maylee? Actually, I am an uh, only child. Really? Yeah. Most family in China have only one child, no ladies. I didn't know that. What about you, Marcos? I come from a big family. I have three brothers and two sisters. Wow. Is that typical in Peru? Not really. A lot of families are smaller these days. But big families are great because you get lots of birthday presents. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. For everybody, what is only child? Solo hijo. Hijo único. Very good. And then we have nowadays. What is nowadays? Hoy en día. Very good. Hoy en día. I guess that is the only one. Yeah, I don't think that is all. Let's continue practicing. Um, Karen and uh, uh, Jorge, please. Okay. Uh, how many brothers and sisters do you have, Maylee? Actually, I only child. Really? Yeah. Most families in China have only one child nowadays. I didn't know that. What about you, Marcos? I come, I come from a big family. I have three brothers and two sisters. Whoa, is that typical in Peru? Not really. A lot of families are smaller. 
these days, but big family are great because you get a lot of birthday presents. Perfect. Now it's going to be um, Kevin and Vilma. How many brothers and sisters do you have, Maylee? Actually, I am only child. Really? Yeah. Most family in China have only one child. No, no, no. Nowadays. Nowadays. I didn't know that. What about you, Marco? I come from a big fam family. I have three brothers and two sisters. Wow. Is that typical in Peru? Not really. A lot of families are smaller these days, but big families are great because you get lots of birthday presents. Perfect. Thank you. Now it's going to be Jose Lino and Gabriela Argueta. How many brothers and sisters do you have, mainly? Actually, I only child. Really? Yeah. Most family in China have only one child nowadays. I didn't know that. What about you, Marcos? I come from a big family. I have three brothers and two sisters. Wow. Is that typical in Peru? Not really. A lot of families are smaller these days. But big families are great because you get lots of birthday presents. Perfect. Thank you. Questions about this conversation? What is the meaning of nowadays? Nowadays. What is nowadays, people? Hoy en día. Hoy en día. Very good. Any other question? Okay, good. Let's move on. Then after this one, we have a 5.7 lesson objective. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fabiola, could you please help me uh, reading this one? Okay, and this lesson participants will be ex exposed to quantifiers and their meanings. Very good. So quantifiers and their meaning. And here we have a little, a little one that is not that difficult. All, nearly all, most, many, a lot of, some, not many, a few, few. I believe that you don't have any problem with this. After that one, we have the knowledge check. So that is for you to read the sentences and then check the response. Any questions about this? No questions. Good. Then we have 5.10. Uh, let's see. Herman, could you please help me reading this uh, lesson? Herman, are you here? Okay, he's not here. Oh, here he comes. Uh, yeah. oh. In this lesson, lesson participants be free and ask about farming and their thing. Very good, perfect, thank you. So that was about the change in family, right? So we have uh, a little reading here and we check how families have changed and then uh, we have the exercise. Do you have any question about this exercise? Mm. No. Okay. So then after this one, we have the final test. That is the very, very end of the platform. So the first one is going to be a listening. So you have to listen to uh, the little conversation and then we have to check into these uh, options. Any questions about the listening? 
Yeah, okay. Very easy, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we have complete the conversations. So we have to complete according to what we have there. Any questions about this? That's okay. Good, perfect. Then we have the multiple choice, that is the part C, where we are going to choose the option according to the sentence. Any questions about this part? Do you know what is go jogging? Yoga. Mm. Trotar. Trotar. No. Very good. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. So the last part is going to be a uh, reading where we're going to read about Audrey Tattoo from France uh, and then select the options according to the reading. Questions about this? Mm -mm. Okay. No. If you're here, everything is fine. So um, at the end of the class, maybe I'm going to ask again. So just in case other people hasn't come yet to the class. Uh, but it's important for us to finish, okay? Then we're going to, ah, oh, well, that was the question, Joey, good. We're going to go to the class. I mean, to the regular class, right? I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this is a world, a modal verb. Do you know what is a modal? Mm -mm. Okay, a model is a word that transforms the verb. So, will, cool, can, should, must, all those words are models. And today we're going to check about a world that is a very popular uh, and useful word. So, for first of all, when are we going to use would? When we request for something, okay? So for example, the first one is a question. Will you lend me a pen, please? That in Spanish is la iría. Le gustaría, uh, comería, saltaría, iría, something like that. Uh, in English, well, we have different usage of the word would. The first one is request. And the second example is, I would like more coffee, please. So that is a request. Any questions about the first part? Request. Para pedir algo. Request. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next one is to offer. Is the opposite. To offer something in a very polite way. For example, would you like some more tea? So you are offering tea. Would you like? And the other one is, I will be happy to help you with the preparation for your exam. That is very polite. I will be happy to help you. Do you see that also the verb is going to be the base form? So the verb to be is going to be be. No is, no am, no are. So it's going to be exactly the base form, okay? So I will be happy to help you with your preparation for your exam, to offer. Any questions about this part? No. Okay. The other one is a little bit more complex. Este es un poquito más compleja. La vamos a ver aunque no nos tocaba, pero pues siempre me gusta traer cosas adicionales. Second and third conditional. Los condicionales son cuando tenemos dos oraciones. Uno se cumple si el otro eh, se da. Es decir que uno depende del otro. Si esto pasa, esta otra cosa es la consecuencia. Eso es un condicional, es algo muy fácil. Y aquí tenemos un ejemplo con if, que es un condicional de si. Si tuviéramos un carro, manejaríamos al trabajo. Iríamos, otra vez como posibilidad. If we had a car, we would drive to work. Estas se llaman cláusulas, English clause. Y casi siempre son dos oraciones unidas. En este caso están separadas por una coma. If we had a car, that's the first sentence. And then we would drive to work is the second sentence. La segunda, manejaríamos el trabajo, depende de la primera, si tuviéramos carro. Pero como no tenemos, hay que agarrar el bus. So that is it. 
The second example says, if, if he had gone to the party, he would have seen a lot of his friends. La idea es la misma, solo que aquí la gramática es un poquito más avanzada. Esa es la única diferencia, pero es una cláusula. Si esto pasa, pasaría esto como consecuencia. That is um, very common, pero por supuesto más adelante van a llegar a eso. Esto es solo como una, una chispita para que vayan viendo lo que, lo que vamos a ver más adelante. Anyways, de alguna manera, ¿tienen alguna pregunta en cuanto al este second and third condition? No. Ok. The last one is very popular as well. Habits in the past. Un hábito en el pasado. When I was at school, I would get up before everyone else in our house. So, es un hábito que pasaba antes. Cuando yo estaba en la escuela, me levantaba. Nosotros decimos me levantaba, pero en inglés vamos a usar would. Recordemos de que no se traduce literalmente. ¿verdad? Nosotros adaptamos el idioma. Por eso ahí would es lo correcto en inglés, pero en español lo cambiamos a un tiempo diferente. So, when I was at school, I would get up before everyone else in our house. The other one it says, when I lived in the country, I will go for a walk in the woods every day. Cuando vivía en el campo, salía a caminar en el bosque todos los días. Se salía. Esta parte lo cambiamos. No es simple past, no es pasado simple, sino que usamos would. ¿Por qué y cómo se usa? Eso lo van a ver más adelante. Pero también es con mucho espacio para que vayan viendo que ya oraciones un poco más complejas llevan gramática un poco más avanzada, pero no es algo del otro mundo, es algo muy sencillo, solo hay que practicar, of course. So now, do you have any question? For us by now, request and offer is enough, okay? That is enough. Okay, we are going to practice, definitely. Let me just open here the exercise. Okay. And here we go. Okay. So um, you can do this. This is, uh, you just need to check what will be the best option. Okay. I knew he will. What do you think is here? B. B. Okay. Very good. Only be, not to be. Ah. ¿Se acuerdan que el tú no va? Sino que solo va en be. Here. <laughs> yeah, that's why we practice. Don't worry. Okay, number two. He said that... He will to help me. He will to help me. Do you agree? Uh, no. He's hid. Hid. Okay, so, recuérdense que hid, esta parte es la contracción de he would. Podemos decir I'd, que es I would. Podemos decir she'd, que es she would. So, la contracción siempre va a ser con una D. Entonces, tenemos a una persona que dice que es he, and the other one says that is he would too. What? Change the, the answer. <laughs> he'd. Okay. He'd. Okay. He'd. So, two he'd. Everybody agrees? He'd. 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 Okay, good. Let's take that one. Ya vamos a ver cómo salimos. Number three. I asked him to walk faster, but he... wants Would? Oh. Or he, uh, D? Or wouldn't? Wouldn't. Okay, would. He would. Wouldn't. Ajá, uh -huh. we have wouldn't. half and half. Wouldn't. Tenemos tres y dos. Wouldn't va ganando. Wouldn't. That is negative, of course, right? It's the same would, but it's negative. So, what do you think? Tenemos va ganando wouldn't. What do you think? Wouldn't. Bueno, tenemos otro would y otro wouldn't. Vamos a poner wouldn't porque hay más of wouldn't. Pero ya vamos a ver la respuesta correcta. Vamos a ver cómo salimos. So, number four is going to be, as children, we would... Play. 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 Playing. Oh, play or playing? 
Play. 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 Okay, good. Number five. Nobody knew that one day he. Wolf. 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 Okay, wolf. 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 Okay, wolf. Everybody says wolf. Only one that said wolf too. Number six. Wolf. If you ask me, would I I would or I? I. 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 Very good. So the most, the majority say I. Number seven, would you like, 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 like. number eight, do you think he'd help? I'm sure. Yeah. He'd. 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 Okay, the majority said here, so I'm going to take here. Number nine, he will, do you remember what is sim? No. Sim es parecer, en este caso es como que parece que estaría, como que está improvisando, algo así, ¿verdad? He sim. So it sim, seems or simmed? Sim. 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 Okay, sim says everybody. And the last one. We want to play tennis. I wish. It would. It would. Uh, the rest. It would. It would. It would. Okay. Okay, now here comes the moment. Ahora viene la verdad, el momento. Se lleva el carro, no se lo lleva. Okay, 90. We have 90%. Uh, let me check what is the incorrect. I don't know if it's here. No, no muestra cual, pero creería yo que es. Let me check. Okay, number eight. This is it. Uh, because in the answer, we're going to say he would. Okay. That is the only thing. But the rest, very, very good. Nice job, you have a 90. Good. Now we are going to continue. Uh, let's see. Okay. Any questions about wood? Okay. It's very easy, right? It's, it's fácil. Por ahora, más adelante, con gramática más uh, avanzada, no es que sea difícil, sino que hay que poner atención a ciertas cosas. By now, we're going to continue with the class. So this is family tree. Okay. Uh, this is kind of easy, I guess. So we have mm -hmm. some vocabulary. We have a grandfather and grandmother that you know what is it. But above that one, we have great grandfather, bisabuelo, okay? And great grandmother. And together, they are great grandparents, okay? Above that one, arriba de ese tenemos todavía otros, como great, great grandfather. Solo le vamos argumentando great. Great, great bisabuelo. grandmother. Bisabuelo, tatarabuela, anything like that is going to be great. Great grandfather, great great grandfather, great great grandmother, and that's it. Okay. Then, of course, we have mother and father. That together, remember, they are parents. Okay. Here is you. And then, if you are married, he is your wife or your husband. And together, there are spouses. Okay, that is the word for the two, spouses. Okay, then we have sister and brother. Together, they are siblings. Siblings. Siblings is all together, okay? And we have the brother-in-law, the father-in-law, the sister-in-law, anything that you may want in-law. Los in-law 
que es la familia política, right? And we have uncle, aunt. Uh, what is uncle? Do you remember? Yo. Good. Yo. And the female is aunt, right? Yo. That is, this is different for both. Okay. And we have cousins. Uh, for male or female is cousin. Don't worry. And we can say the cousin's wife, the cousin's husband, anything like that. Any questions before we continue? No. Okay, let's continue then. Then we have here, let's see, son and daughter. Together we can say children or kids, but children is more common. And we have daughter-in-law, son-in-law that are part of the in-laws. And we have grandson, granddaughter. And also below that one, we have great-grandson, great-granddaughter, and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here on this side, we have nephew and niece. What is nephew? Sobrino. Okay, and niece? Sobrina. Very good. Remember, pronunciation is niece. Nice is another thing, right? Por eso es muy importante la pronunciación en inglés, porque si usted lo dice diferente, ya es otra palabra. Ya dijo otra cosa. So, niece. And then, of course, we have nephew's wife, niece's husband, so like that. Below that one, we can have the grandnephew and grandniece. And of course, below here, we have the great grand nephew or the great grand niece. Okay. And a little bit more here, we have second cousin. That means that is the son of this one, right? Second cousin, as it could be second cousin's wife and things like that. So we can have third cousin, fourth cousin, whatever you want, like here. Okay. So that is like the most common vocabulary. Do you have any question here? No. Okay. No. And yeah, siblings that are together and godparents. Do you know what are godparents? No. Okay. No. Padrinos, que no es parte de la familia, pero a veces se menciona. Godparents. We can say, oh. we can say godmother or god uh, father and together they are god points okay okay very good any question with the family tree no questions okay no. let's practice a little bit uh karen tell me about your family Le hable de mi familia, algo así me dijo. Yes, please. My mother is commerciant. Okay. Oh, no sé cómo. She can say she's a businesswoman. Okay. Okay. Um, my husband is manager. Okay. <coughs> My son is studying. Okay. And I am businesswoman. Very good. And do you have um, brothers, sisters? Yes. Uh, three sisters. Only women? Yes. That is good. Interesting. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Karen. Jorge, could you please tell me about your family? Uh, well... Uh, I don't have grand, great, grand, great, no, great grandfather and mother. Okay. Uh, I have one sister and I have one daughter. I have three, four nephew and Two niece. nieces. Nieces. Mm -hmm. 
Very good, perfect, thank you. It's a large family, nice. Susie, tell me about your family. Hello, Susie. Are you here? Not here. Um, okay. I, I have two sisters and two brothers. Mm -hmm. My father is, no sé cómo decir, que se dedica a la ganadería. It's a farmer. Farmer, eh, my mother, eh, Es comerciante, no sé. No business sé woman. She's a business woman. Okay. Eh, business woman. Mm. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Uh, do you know uh, everybody? Do you know how to say padrastro, madrastra? No. Okay. That is stepmother stepfather and together they are step parents okay just in case you need that okay uh, next one is Kathy Sines tell me about your family uh, okay teacher uh, I had two brothers and Victor and Roberto and, uh, how do you say uh, my, my, my mayor older brother Okay, my older brother is Victor and my little brother is Roberto. Okay. And the name of my parents is Victor and Cristina. And I have two siblings, mm -hmm. one niece and one nephew, uh, Sophie and Santiago. Uh, my favorite housing is Jacqueline and she is a lawyer. And my grandmother is Luisa. Um, I don't have. Well, how do you how do you say no no? I don't have grand grandfather. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, mm -hmm. Only that. Perfect. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, okay. Edith Ramirez, tell me about your family. Uh, okay. Uh, I live with my mother, and I have two brothers. My older brother, old brother, sorry, is a businessman, and my younger brother work in Capri. Also, I live with my sister-in-law and my niece. She, my sister-in-law, work in a despacho de cobros. ¿Cómo se dice? Um, that is a recovery, a recovery uh, office. A recovery office. And my, my niece uh, is 10 years old. Uh, only that. Okay, thank you. That, interesting. Okay. Maribel, tell me about your family. Okay. Um, my parents uh, live with my brothers. Um, I have two daughters. Um, one, one daughter has two, two sons. Um, oh, my, my, my daughter, um, how one was, um, sorry, um, uh, how one son, okay. uh, she, she's a study. Mm -hmm. Study English in university. At the university, good. Yes. Okay. Um, 
my um, my brothers uh, seventh. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is going to be Fabiola. Please tell me about your family. Um, yes. Um, I have um, only my father. Um, name is Victor. And I have one sister and one brother. Um, also, I have um, I have my sobrina. I don't remember. Uh, niece. Niece. I have one niece. Uh, she is uh, she is uh, six years old. Um, this is my family. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Next one is Eileen. My mother is a housewife. I have four siblings, three sisters, and one brother. I have one daughter, and I have grandmother. Okay, very good. Thank you. Next one is Umberto. Tell me about your family. In my family is um, I'm married. I I have a wife. Uh, I have two kids, one son and one daughter. Um, my father and mother is uh, are living in in USA, and I have two brothers and one sister. Uh, my brothers are Jose and Antonio, and my sister is uh, Crystal. And for, for they, um, uh, how I have um, three beautiful nieces. Perfect, thank you. Next one is going to be Jorge Antonio. Please tell me about your family. Teacher, I already did. Ah, oh, yeah, your family. Family. Yeah, that is true. Okay, thank you. Next okay. one is going to be Herling Laines. Hi, uh, I am a mother, Miriam, and my father, Mauricio. I had an uh, older brother, Jaime. And I had one sister, my younger sister, Jacqueline. And I had two nephews and one niece. And I had one out, Roxana, and I had one uncle, Ruben. And I had a lot of cousins. And I had a grandmother, Egma. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Harleen. Okay, thank you. Gabriela, please. Uh, my mother's name is Carla and my stepfather's name is Carlos. I have a young sister. Her name is Beatriz and I have grandmother and grandfather. And also I have five cousins and three aunts. Very good, interesting, large family. Next one is going to be Vilma. I live in my parents. Okay. Uh, I have two brothers. I have sister-in-law and one knife. Okay, perfect, thank okay. you. Next one is Herman. Are you here with us, Herman? Not here. Uh, Susie, did you do that? 
Okay. Ah, okay. Hello. Okay. I, I I don't have grandfather. Uh, grand. I don't have a grandmother. Uh, I had a uh, one brother. Your name is Javier. Uh, I had one uh, niece. I had uh, two two sons. Um, only that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I don't remember if Susie finished already. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, let's see next one, Lilian. Hello, Lilian. No, Lilian. Okay, Kayla, uh, here with us. I live with my parents and my younger sister. And she's 19 years old. And my father's name is Rafael, and my mother's name is Patricia. And my sister and I, oh, and me, mm -hmm. are students. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, the next one is Carla. Carla, are you here with us? Mm, I guess she's not. Okay, uh, everybody finished, right? Everybody passed already. Good. So let's continue with the next topic. This is a very important topic. This is the present continuous. Okay. So for first of all, we're going to check um, the grammar. This is kind of easy, but there are some rules that we need to remember. So for first of all, in the affirmative, we're going to have the subject, that is the first part. He, she, Carlos, Maria, whatever you want. Then the verb to be, in present, of course. Uh, so if he's she, is going to be she is. I am, you are, okay? And then it goes the verb with ing at the end. It's kind of easy. For example, he is playing, okay? For the negative, we are going to have the subject, he, she, Carlos, Maria. The verb to be is going to be in negative. The verb to be, no other part, that part. So I am not, she isn't. We aren't, okay? And then the verb to be also in ing, not change. For example, he isn't playing. For the questions, it's going to be just like the affirmative. The only difference is that the verb to be is first, is before the subject. So we're going to use am, um, is, or are, depending on the subject. Am I, are you, is he, is it, okay? And of course, after that one, we have the verb, the main verb with the verb uh, ing. Do you have any questions about this? No, teacher. Okay, perfect, thank you. Let's continue with the usage. When are we going to use the present continuous? Or sometimes we call it the present progressive. It's the same. So when you want to describe something which is happening at the exact moment of speech, that means something that is happening right now, okay? In the moment. Then we're going to use the present continuous. For example, Jim is watching television at the moment, right now, okay? Do you remember the simple present tense? So the simple present tense is like, she goes, she goes to the park. So that is habit, 
routine. This one is for the moment. She is going to the park right now at the moment. Any questions with this part? No. Okay. The it's next speech. one. Speech is um, only speech is como discurso, pero en este caso es en el momento de hablar, en el momento que se está hablando. Okay. Good question. Any other question? Good. The next one is when you want to describe an action that is taking place now, but not at the exact moment of speech. So it's something that is happening. You know, for example, John is working in London. So he is working right now, today, tomorrow, in a period of time that is the present. Okay, it's not a routine because he doesn't work there all the time. He is working in London right now. Any questions about this? Okay. So we can also use the present continuous or present progressive to describe an action that is a, an event planned in the future. Something that you planned and you are going to do that in the future. For example, I'm taking my French class on Tuesday. So the key in this one is the time expression, Tuesday. If I say I'm taking my French uh, class, that is right now. But if we want to use this for the future, we need to use a time expression. I'm taking my French class next month, next Saturday, next week uh, at 9 a.m., for example, and it's not 9 a.m. right now, okay? Any questions about this one? No question. No, teacher. Okay. Uh, okay. Sometimes we can use uh, the present continuous to describe a temporary action, a temporary situation. For example, I'm staying with a friend for a few days. So that is common as well. Uh, in Spanish, it's totally different, right? But in English, we can use this for something that is going to be a temporary, a period of time, probably in the future. Or it's happening right now, it's continuing in the future for a period of time. It's not an habit. It's not something that you do regularly, okay? Any questions about this? No. Good. The next one says, to emphasize the frequency of an action. Okay, when you emphasize, when you want to say this is happening, for example, the child is always, and that is key, is always crying for no good reason. So always, do you remember that we use that with the simple present tense? So when you say, for example, I always have breakfast in the morning. So here in the present continuous, uh, we're going to use always when something is not good. You are always taking my clothes. She's always coming to our house. So I don't like it. Always is the only one that we're going to use, okay? And we use that with the present continuous for, to emphasize that action, okay? Any questions with this? Not teacher. Okay. And the last part is when you want to describe changing situations, a change. For example, her health is improving by leaps and bounds, okay? What is the meaning of leaps? Uh, leaps es como vueltas, es como ir va poco a poco. Es una expresión que significa poco a poco. Oh. So in this case is her health is improving. So that means that it's a changing situation. She was sick and now she is getting better, right? But it's not an action in the moment. It's something that is a change of a situation. And leaps and bounds is like an, an expression that means little by little, okay? She is getting better. 
Any questions about this? No. Okay. We have a little bit more of rules, just for you to remember, okay? ing spelling this is just the verb ing okay so when a verb ends in e we're going to remove the e from the end of the verb and we are going to add ing so for example dance we delete the e and we say dancing right writing right writing Questions about this? No. For this one, remember that it's going to be E, verbs ending in E, and before the E, we have a consonant. So then we're going to remove the E, okay? So here we have when a verbs ending in IE, okay? We're going to remove the I and the E, from the end of the verb. And we are going to add Y and then the ING. So die, we remove I and E and we add Y and the ING. Die is dying. Lie, lying. Die, tying. Any questions about this? No, teacher. No. Okay, let's go below. Um, when we have a verb that is consonant, vowel, consonant, okay, and it's one syllable, we're going to duplicate the last syllable. For example, cut, consonant, vowel, consonant. Cut is going to be cutting with double T. Run is going to be running with double N. And stop is going to be stopping with double P. So remember, consonant, vowel, consonant. Duplicate the last consonant. Questions about this? No. Oh. Okay. And we have another here. Uh, when we have consonant, vowel, and the letter L. Okay, we're going to double the final L, okay? So uh, do not double the final L unless stress. Stress is like the force in the pronunciation, okay? So equal, equal, listen to the pronunciation, equal. The stress is in E, equal. That means that we're going to duplicate the L, equaling with double L. Okay, travel, traveling, control. So that is different, control. The stress is in the last part. So it's going to be uh, duplicated as well in both, okay? Do you have any questions about this? No. Okay, and we have a little bit more here. Okay, so in general, we're going to add ing. But if a verb finish in W, X, or Y, we are not going to duplicate the letter. So we are not going to duplicate that one. Here, even when it's consonant, vowel consonant, we do not duplicate. So snow is snowing with one W. Fix is fixing with one X. Play is playing uh, because that is with a Y, right? Before we check that one. So ending uh, in consonant plus E, we're going to remove the E. Dance, dancing, right, writing, right, writing. And we're going to remove the IE. So this is the same here, right? Let me see if there is any other. Duplicate, this is the one to duplicate the letter L, and let me see. Sorry. So when, uh, th this one, when the last syllable is not stressed, 
uh, when we have two or more syllables and the final syllable is not stressed, we are not going to duplicate the final letter. Happening, duplicates, open, opening. So that doesn't duplicate and visit, visiting. And this is like the same that we used before, okay? Begin, beginning, that is going to be with WN. Forget, forgetting with WT. Submit, submitting with WT as well. So these are like rules for you to remember when you are going to add ING. So this part is important. Of course, we need to practice as usual so we can remember these kind of situations. Do you have any questions about the spelling rules? No. Okay. So, solo es cuestión de irse acostumbrando y de ir practicando. Like all in English, right? Everything in English is like that. Before we finish, uh, uh, ¿todos terminamos ya la plataforma? No. Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes, yes teacher. Yes, teacher. Si alguien no ha terminado, mañana es el último día para terminar. El último. Se acaba la cora, ¿verdad? Ya no se puede después. Entonces, si no ha terminado, mi recomendación es que trate de terminar temprano. Que le digo yo, en la mañana si se puede. Una tarde a más tardar. Porque si se espera hasta en la noche y de repente una internet, se cae el sistema, muchas cosas pasan. Eh, al me, a la medianoche ya no hay acceso a la plataforma. ¿Ok? Así okay. de que igual si necesitan ayuda o algo, pues ahí estamos a la orden para que puedan escribir y terminamos. Ok. Perfecto. Okay. Okay. No, teacher. Bye. Ok, my friends, tomorrow is our last class of this model, so... We're going to finish practicing the present continuous and then we're going to finish our class. I hope you have a wonderful night today and uh, see you tomorrow. See you. Good night. 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 Good night.